When there's not enough stomach acid there, then we get a lot of problems. And it's very common for someone not to be making enough stomach acid. As a matter of fact, the solution for this phlegmy mucus stuff that most people will, will go towards is some type of PPI or antacid situation that turns off that stomach acid. Now the acid is not coming back up and burning them and they go, oh, well, that's better. That worked out really well. But for a lot of people, it, it doesn't really help at all. Acid reflux is not caused by having too much stomach acid like we're told by advertisers. Acid reflux is caused by not having having enough stomach acid in most cases. So when the food comes in, this little valve opens up at the bottom of the esophagus. It's called the lower esophageal sphincter. And food comes in, and then when we acidify that food, and the food becomes acidic enough, it triggers this valve to close again. So the problem is that valve doesn't close unless it's signaled by an adequate amount of stomach acid. When it seals, acid doesn't come up, and we don't get burned. Turning off your stomach acid is not always the right solution. There's a reason that we have stomach acid. Not only is it crucial to help us break down our food and access nutrients in our food, you know, we keep hearing all these people talking about this connection between long-term PPI use and osteoporosis. And it kind of makes sense if you understand that, well, the body's not getting the nutrients that it needs, so it's just breaking down our own tissues and bones to access those nutrients. It's not like the body's attacking its bones just because it wants to. It's shopping at the 7-Eleven because it doesn't have the resources it needs and your body is that 7-Eleven. Not only is that crucial for us to be able to get the nutrients out of our food, but that stomach acid is also the main barrier for the whole body. When microbes come in on the food that we eat, and these little varmints are coming in, it's pretty impossible to completely uh, avoid them. And when they come in, they die in an acid bath. That stomach acid fries them and that's what keeps them from going into the small intestine and setting up camp and raising their kids and getting what we call small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The other problem is that this acid function in the stomach triggers other parts of digestion further down the line. It makes pancreatic enzymes happen. It makes us move the food into the small intestine. And when the acidic product gets into the small intestine, it triggers the gallbladder to drop bile down. And we need bile to help us emulsify our fats. And we need bile to be moving so that toxins can be removed from the body. So not having your bile flowing is not just at all. You might get some gallstones. It's a lot more trouble than that. But that initial stomach acid being there is crucial to make sure that bile can move and that bile even gets called on in the first place. So there's a lot of reasons not to turn your stomach acid off, but once you understand that this is a lack of stomach acid and it's not an issue of having too much stomach acid, then you can just take the necessary steps to help your body start making more of its own hydrochloric acid like it's supposed to.